I'm Dr. Rajay Shetty from Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, and I'm going to speak on extended OPLL. At the outset, my sincere thanks to Professor SKS and the Bombay Spine Society for giving me this opportunity. We do know that the posterior longitudinal ligament extends from the tectorial membrane of the basion to cossex. Therefore, any ossification or pathological ectopic ossification of the PLL <clears throat> can extend from the cervical spine from C1 up to the thoracic and lumbar vertebra. Even though uh, popularly reported in the Japanese literature, we do know, now know that the OPLL is present worldwide. If you look at the prevalence of OPLL worldwide, in the Asian subcontinent, earlier it was reported as 2 to 3%, but now we know it is about 6%, whereas in the US it is about 1.3 to 2.5%. What has changed with time is the imaging modality of choice. With CT scan being the imaging modality of choice, there is a higher prevalence that has been reported. In the Indian subcontinent, the incidence of OPLL is unknown. Therefore, with this, we did a study of 2,500 CT scans and we noted a prevalence of cervical OPLL of about 5% in the Indian population. The most commonly affected decade is the sixth, uh, uh, sixth decade. And most common involved level is C5-6 level. When you look at the various phenotypes of OPLL, the segmental type is common, which is similar to the Japanese study. Whereas the second most commonest is the mixed one as against, whereas in the Japan, Japanese study, it was the continuous one. When you look at the association between the cervical OPLL and the thoracic OPLL and thoracic OLF, you can see that thoracic OPLL <clears throat> is about 7.8%, whereas the thoracic OLF is about 36%. When you look at the Japanese studies, they have quoted a coexistence about 56%, whereas uh, of OPLL, whereas of thoracic OLF, it is about 44%. 0.9%, which is much higher than our study, is probably because we used a trauma series of patients which were much younger overall in, in age. What about the extended OPLL? That is the OPLL that extends into the cervical thoracic junction. In our study, the majority of the thoracic OPLL is situated in the T1, T2, is T1, T2 or the upper thoracic spines. This is similar to the study which was published in 2018 by Hiraya et al., wherein they also noticed that majority of the OPLL occurs in T1 in men and T3 to 4 in, in women. But of interest is that whenever you have severe OPLL of the cervical spine, there are multiple ossified lesions along the cervical thoracic and thoracolumbar junctions. They also noted that patients with high cervical ossification index, there is a multiple vertebra that is involved, has got a higher risk of ossified lesions in the whole of the spine. The importance of all this is the fact that whenever you have OPLL in the cervical spine, it's always important or mandatory to screen the whole of the spine. And if necessary, you may need to use a CT scan to diagnose significant lesions in other areas of the spine. It's also important, Hira et al. in one of the other studies also noted that the thickness and extension of the ossified lesions may be associated with lower extremity dysfunction in cervical OPLL. That means whenever there is a cervical thoracic OPLL, there's a higher chance of disability in this particular group of patients. The what is characteristic of this group of patients, the presence with early onset of symptoms with regards to age, associated ossifications of other spinal ligaments. Since it's a transition from lordosis to kyphosis, it allows a posterior fallback and a posterior approaches could be adequate. It could be either in the form of a laminoplasty or laminectomy. What we usually use is either a lateral mass screws in the pedicle screws or a pedicle screw construct. We also use pedicle screws on one side, and we have found that there is no difference in outcome between a solitary or a bilateral pedicle screw constructs. Uh, in our analysis of 63 patients of these patients, about 7% of them did not have any change, and 6% had worsening of neurology with a gradual recovery. What is OPLL extending to C2? It is basically called a C2 plus OPLL. That is OPLL when it is situated cranial to the inferior end plate of the C2 vertebra. It's usually an extension from C3. It's, in the earlier phase, it usually does not cause compressive myelopathy because of the wider canal diameter. What is different? It's relatively rarer. There's no clear guidelines on this management. 
the complexity of his anatomy makes it much more difficult to approach from the anterior side. As I mentioned, there are various approaches. Anterior approaches has been reported as by this article by Kimura et al, where they have used a modified Shikata's technique of using plate screws or a plate screw fixation if it's visible. But what is interesting is when you look at this result of the 16 patients, seven patients had complications which were significantly uh, higher. And the increase in JO score was only 11 to 13, which is not very, very significant. It may be indicated in patients who did not have any major improvement following a posterior surgery, then probably an anterior, as an anterior approach. Yes, sir, uh, indication. Yes, yes. When you look at the posterior approach, either you can have a laminoplasty or laminectomy with instrumentation. But we do know by the deformity studies of the cervical spine that the instrumentation of C2, it does not affect the outcome uh, in terms of radiological or functional outcome. With this in background, we did a study of our patients. We had 61 patients. As you can see, the patients were much older with significant medical comorbidities, either two or three comorbidities in 30 to 40% of the patient. The mixed type was more commoner. The, the more number of levels were involved. And this is one of the case examples who underwent surgery with a significant neurological improvement. One more examples. But what is important is that there was a significant neurological improvement from a mean JO score of 10 to 15, with excellent in 44% and good in 54%. We had six patients with CSF leak. I will explain to them as to why I think it is. There is no difference in outcome between the K-line positive or a K-line negative group or in between the HZ positive or HZ negative groups. And comparing our results with existing literature, we found that our results almost matched the published literature on this particular topic. And what our study reveals is that the space available for the cord is minimal in C25 level when compared to C2 minus OPLL, where commonly it affects the lower cervical spine. They have got a longer segments that is spanned. Intraoperative dural tear was a significant complication for us. And it posterior instrumented laminectomy and fusion gives reasonably good results. As I mentioned earlier, it was in the beginning when we started using ultrasonic bone cutters. As you can see, when you have the OPLL in the center, that's not a problem. But when the OPLL is extending laterally, if you're using an ultrasonic bone cutter, there is a limited space between, and hence there is a chance that when you are using the cutter through and through, it can cause a dural tear. Therefore, beware when you have an eccentric ossification when you are using an ultrasonic bone cutter. To conclude, the prevalence of cervical OPLL in Indian population is about 5.12. High cervical OP index increases the risk of uh, ossified lesions in the whole of the spine and hence whole spine screening is advocated. And in C2 plus OPLL causing myelopathy, the results is as similar to C2 minus OPLL especially in our scenario of post-instrumented laminectomy and fusion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.